You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars for disk imaging and cloning software when there's well-known, powerful, and completely free programs like Clonezilla. In the next couple of videos, I will show you how to clone and image a PC with Clonezilla Live. We'll look at cloning first. For those unaware, disk cloning is the process of copying a hard drive's data onto another drive bit by bit. This includes the drive's data, partitions, and file system information. You can then boot the clone drive on another PC if you've cloned your Windows or Linux disk, or use the clone disk as a backup. Unlike the many commercial disk imaging and cloning softwares, Clonezilla isn't a program that you can install on Windows or Linux. And that's because Clonezilla is itself a Linux-based operating system. And that's why it's so good. You can use it on any PC to clone any disk. To get started, you're going to need an empty or blank USB flash drive to install Clonezilla on. Then you're going to need a destination disk that you want to clone your PC to, whether it be a regular hard drive, an SSD, or NVMe. And then you need the source disk, or the disk you want to copy from. In most cases, your source disk is going to be your Windows or Linux drive. In my case, I'll be cloning my web server, which is running Windows. I will be cloning to a 1TB Samsung SSD. And one very important note, the disk that you're cloning to must be equal to or larger than the source. For example, if the drive your Windows system is on is a 500 gig hard drive, the disk that you clone to should also be 500 gigs or higher in capacity. I also must stress that before using Clonezilla and especially before cloning a disk, please make sure you back up your most important files first. Let's first go ahead and download Clonezilla's live disk. We can go to download, stable, and we'll select 64 bit. I'm going to download the ISO and download. So take us to SourceForge where it will download the Clonezilla Live ISO image. And while that's happening, we'll go to the Rufus website and download the latest version of it. Once the download is complete, open up Rufus and select the Clonezilla ISO that you downloaded. We'll set the partition scheme to GPT and click start. We'll use the recommended write mode and this message will tell us that everything on that USB drive will be erased. We'll let this happen and come back. Once that's done, take out the USB, stick it into the computer that you want to clone, and connect the destination drive. Power up that PC, enter your BIOS, and select the USB device to boot from. You can get to this menu by hitting the F2, F7, F8, delete key, F12. You may have to look at your PC to find out how to get into that menu. But once you do, select the USB device, and Clonezilla Live to boot up. All right, I'm at the web server, and I'm going to power it on. We'll need to hit the F7 key in my case to enter boot setup. And I will look for my PYN USB UEFI. And we're now in to Clonezilla. Let's go ahead and hit the first option. Enter on that. We'll select our language, English. It's fine. And we'll keep the default keyboard layout. We're just going to choose Start Clonezilla. And what we're trying to do is create a clone, so we don't want to make an image. So we want to select the second option, Device to Device. This option, we can choose Beginner or Expert mode. I'm going to just choose Beginner. And we want to select Disk to Local Disk. First option. Next, this is a very important step. We need to pick the source disk. In this case, it's going to be my 256 Crucial SSD. This is the drive with my Windows installation. So we'll select that. Next, we need to choose our destination or target device drive. And that's going to be my one terabyte Samsung. So I'll just choose that. Everything on this device. The target will be erased. So this option, Clonezilla is asking you if it should check the source disk and repair it if there are errors. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll just skip that, but this is something I recommend that you do. Next, we need to choose how Clonezilla should create the partitions. We'll just stick with the first option. We just want to clone the disk as it is. And lastly, it will ask us what we should do after it's done cloning the drive. First option is it will let us choose what we want to do, enter the command line, reboot or shut down. 
I'll tell it to ask us what to do in it. Enter on that. We'll hit enter. And it screams at us in all caps that all the data on the target drive will be erased and tells you the drive along with the partitions. It's asking, are we sure we want to continue? Yes. And it's asking us again, are we absolutely sure we want to do this? Yes. Hit enter. And it will begin the process of cloning our disk. Starts by loading up all the drives and the partitions. And then eventually, it will change into a different interface, which it will show you the process of the cloning, as shown here. Gives you quite a bit of information, uh, starting with the size of the partitions, the drive, file system, and depending on the speed of your storage and the size of the drive that you're cloning, this could take quite a bit of time. So we can see here where it says device size, we've got the 256 drive, but only 90 gigs is used. So that's what's gonna be cloned to the disk, the target disk. Tells us our free space. So we're gonna let this run and We'll come back, look at the drive in Windows to make sure everything is set up correctly. Then I'm gonna come back, put it into my laptop and try to boot up the clone disk in that. One thing to note too, at the bottom, this bottom bar, progress bar, you will find that it stays at a really low percentage, but once this top bar is complete, It'll jump to 100%. See, we're getting close to the completion of this partition. This is the partition with the Windows installation and all of my data. The other partitions, like the recovery and the reserve partitions, will be instant. It's cloned successfully. And as each partition is completed, you will see this clone successful message and once everything is done clones it will go ahead and clean up itself give it a little time and then you will be back at an option prompt hit enter to continue and that's it we're done we can power off reboot or enter the command prompt i want to just briefly show you that there is a command prompt and we're running debian here you wanted to see the file system, you can do ls at the root, and you see we have Linux. This is very important, especially when you want to look at log files, which I believe is in var, yes, var log. And I believe there is a, oh, a bit lag. <laughs> Let's do log. Yes, there is a clonezilla log here that you can look through in case there are errors. So I just wanted to mention that. We can reboot the system now. Let's just type reboot. But actually, let's power off because I want to show you the disk in Windows. So we'll do shut down or shut down now. All right, let's take this disk out, bring it in Windows and see what it looks like. All right, back on my Windows machine, my main machine, I've gone ahead and attached the clone disk, which is labeled Windows 11 Enterprise. And it's got all of the files looking at computer management. I can see that all the partitions on disk two have been copied. This includes the EFI partition, the Windows Enterprise partition itself, and the recovery partition, along with some extra space left over. So I'll go ahead and take this drive out and boot it up on the laptop. All right, I'm on the laptop. Let's go ahead and power it up. And here we are. Let's go ahead and log in. And here we are. Now, I go to settings here and look at the system. The web server was installed on my Intel Nook, 
which is why it has the name Intel Nook. But we can see that it's actually the gaming laptop that we're running right now. Once you've booted up the cloned PC, the first thing you're going to want to do is install all the hardware drivers, especially if it's a completely different computer that you cloned from. The Nook that I had did not have any dedicated graphics, but after installing my NVIDIA graphics, you can see that I have my ancient 1050 recognized by Windows. If we look at the PC here, we got our Windows 11 Enterprise, and we have our secondary NVMe drive that's in this laptop. And that's how you clone a PC with Clonezilla. In the next video, I'll show you how to image a PC, which is similar to cloning, except the clone is saved as a file or a folder of files that you can use to restore on multiple computers. <music>